All right, so in today's video, I wanted to take a moment to show you how I manage my locomotives and more specifically the process that I go through when adding a new locomotive to a piece of software called Decoder Pro, which comes bundled as part of a system called JMRI. Now, before we get started, if you want to skip around this video, check out the timeline below and I will mark it as I always do. But if you're a little bit lost on the terminology that I just used, let's take a moment to step back and explain exactly what it is that we're looking at uh, today. So what you're looking at is what I like to call the pendulum station control system. And it's complete with its own little logo because I have nothing better to do with my time. And uh, this is part of a small computer system that I have hooked up underneath the layout, which allows for automation and easier uh, decoder programming. Now, if you have an old computer, a dusty laptop sitting in the closet, anything will really work to get a system like this going. But what I have installed under the layout is something called a Raspberry Pi. You can pick these up for about 100 to 150 bucks, depending if it's new um, or used. And uh, you bring this home, install something called a Raspberry Pi OS on it. And uh, once that's all done, you're basically good to go. Now you can attach it to the layout as is. There's screw holes already uh, put into the board. Um, or you can take it a step further if you want to and you can get some of these cool little micro towers with little screens on the front. You can really deck these things out. It's pretty incredible what people do with these little guys. I've seen everything from smart mirrors to automated sprinkler systems and in our case um, decoder programming and layout automation. So once you've got that, now you need uh, your new computer system to um, speak with your DCC system. Now, in my case, I use something called an NCE power cab. They're super simple to set up. I really like it. It's very popular in the States, and you can actually expand on this system uh, pretty easily. But this is only half the puzzle here. You now need this controller to talk to the computer system. More importantly, the computer system needs to be able to communicate with all the items, uh, lights, locomotives, and things on the layout. And you do that through the use of something called a USB interface. Now, don't close out the video because you can really do this on a Saturday. It's much easier to set up than you think it would. And uh, you got your controller. If that's already in place, you're halfway there. The Raspberry Pi, like I said, is about a hundred bucks. Stick this thing in the middle, hook them all up together. Bob's your uncle. And the only final step is putting JMRI onto your box, which is, uh, which is cake. You just drag and drop some files onto the, uh, the desktop. And if anybody's interested, by the way, in how I do this, I'm happy to create a video on the setup process from start to finish. So let's go ahead and open up Decoder Pro and we'll add a new locomotive. Now, why would we go through all the hassle of doing this? Well, I really hate typing in CB values on my controller. It takes too long, it's boring, and if you have sound locos, it can get really complicated, and using this system allows me to modify things real easy. So if we, for example, take a look at the, uh, the Class 158 that we just reviewed recently, and I open up the programming screen, the Zemo controller software, um, or the Zemo uh, DCC chip, has a ton of features on it. And while you could go through and try to program CV values, yikes, it would take a long time. So, of course, today my system wants to be a little bit slow, so let's just go ahead and wait for it to pop up here. And here you can see all of the features that this particular uh, controller, or excuse me, DCC chip has, and it has a lot. So if we go to sound levels, for example, you can come in here and modify everything from the two-torn hone down to, um, you know, the brake squeal, the starting whistle, whatever the case is, you can modify everything in here. You can do mapping and things like that. And then once you're done modifying, um, you know, whatever uh, changes you've made to the sheet, you just go ahead and click write full sheet. It sends all that to the locomotive. It programs it in about 10 to 15 seconds, depending on how complicated the commands are, and you're done. And then better yet, let's say you purchase a used locomotive from somebody, you just don't know what they had going on. You can read every single CV value in the locomotive through this on your programming track, um, or you can just factory reset it. And what's really nice is it gives you the option to either do a complete hard reset or hard reset for the current sound project. Now, if you happen to have this locomotive, one of the things that I did when I first uh, purchased it is I hard reset all uh, values to default. Don't do that if you have a sound enabled class 150. Instead, reset it to the sound project. Otherwise, when the sounds all go back in, they won't hit, they won't be, uh, 
correct on the uh, function list, they'll, you know, you'll be pushing the functions you expect to set off the, the correct sound and it'll set off something completely random. Or in my case, the, uh, when I sent it one way, the, uh, the, the headlights would, the tail lights would be on when it went forward and the headlights would went, would go on when it was on backwards and then ran, randomly the uh, cab light would turn on and off. It was a mess. So I reset it to the sound project and then everything was perfect. So just a little tip if you happen to have one of these, um, on your uh, on your layout so the other thing that um, that I can do before we go ahead and add a new locomotive here is um, I have a 12 foot shunting layout now if you're lucky enough to have a spare bedroom or an attic where you can run your trains at relatively high speed in a circular fashion then you're kind of good to go in my case because I'm limited by the space that I have shunting's great but it can get a you know it get a little bit a little bit boring and so all of my trains are automated so I grab my cup of coffee in the morning I'll sit down I'll pick the locomotive that I want to use to shunt, maybe move some carriages back and forth. And in the remaining locomotives on the layout, I'll run a few scripts and they'll start moving back and forth on the layout through the appropriate switches all automatically. And while I'm doing the shunting, I have to follow the rules of the rail and wait for the different locomotives to come and go as they would in and out of a station in real life. And it really brings uh, a sense of realism to your layout that you just can't get any other way. So if you're getting bored of your layout, slap one of these on there and I tell you it's uh, it's incredible what you're able to do all the way down to automating your street and city lights um, by the uh, by the time of the, the, the day it's 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 super cool so all right enough of that let's go ahead and add a new locomotive so you'll notice in the lower left hand corner here I have a picture of each one of the locomotives that I have in stock now I had to play around with a ton of sizes because a recommended size that uh, or resolution, I should say, rather, that was listed on, online really didn't make for a clean thumbnail. So the way that I do it is I pop the locomotive in question into Photoshop. Now, obviously, you have to be respectful of copyright, but because we're just using this locally, not selling it or putting it online, generally speaking, um, I just grab whatever I find on, uh, on Google Images. And if we take a look at the canvas size here, I'm using 1050 width by 750 height and this will give you a perfect looking uh, thumbnail not just in the corner right here but when you go to print out the roster as I do and file in a folder because I can't remember the DCC addresses half the time when I uh, when I stick them on my locos on the layout now we're gonna go up here and click new loco and the first thing it's going to ask you is what kind of decoder is inside of the locomotive now if you have a programming track as I do, but my layout is turned off, as you can see down here below, it's in the other room. Um, you can just read the decoder, and JMRI does a pretty good job of finding the decoder uh, automatically. They really try hard to keep all the all the decoders uh, up to date. In my case, we're just going to go ahead and add it manually, so I'm going to scroll down. I'm using a Soundtracks MC1H104P21, and they are great because they're cheap, and if you don't have sound, um, you can pick these suckers up for like 20 bucks. They, they really are awesome. So we're going to go to Soundtracks. And we're going to look for the simple MC motor decoders. And I'm going to look for the 21 pins. So I'm going to check here. We got MC1H104P21. And uh, it's going to ask us for a roster ID. So you can make this whatever you want. What I do is I do British Rail Dash. Just you know it's arbitrary but that's what i like to use and then in the case of this locomotive it's 5992 so i'm just going to do 5592 uh, excuse me 5599 and that will be the long address that i'll use for this locomotive now <clears throat> I haven't actually programmed this because I just finished a review and I know that it's a uh, short address is three. So I'm going to set it as three for now. And the next time I program it, I'll switch it over to the long address. So we'll go ahead and click save. And we can close out this little box and you can see now we've got a new entry, but it is missing several bits of information. So first thing we want to do is add a picture because that's the fun part. So I'm going to go ahead and bring this down in size here. And we'll close out the JMRI folder. And we're going to click on Labels and Media. And uh, I already whipped up an image earlier. We'll look for the parcels DMU. So we'll go ahead and drag and drop it. I actually just finished a uh, 
<clears throat> a video that's going to go up shortly on this guy. And now we get the thumbnails, and I know it's got the black lines on the side, but trust me, it will come out perfect. That took a lot of trial and error to figure that out. Let's go ahead and close that out, and we'll full screen this again. And then you can see, boom, looks great in the lower left-hand corner here. And again, what's awesome is that when you go to print this out, it looks really nice on either the individual sheet, or you can do a full roster. And uh, and again, I do that. I print it out and put on like a little binder that sits on the uh, sits on the layout so now that we've got the basic information in here the next thing we're going to do uh, is start um, you know putting in the advanced stuff now if you're on your programming track you could go ahead and read the default cv values or whatever you wanted i have the layout off so we're going to switch to edit only just keep in mind that if you have other locomotives on the layout you only want to program on the main and then if you have a dedicated programming track then of course uh, you can move the uh, the train over to that section of your layout and program as normal so let's go ahead and open up and edit only and this is nice because what I'll sometimes do is if I order something online while I'm waiting for it to come in the mail I'll go here and add it into the system so that's kind of ready to go when it arrives so for operator I'm going to put British Rail for number, we'll go ahead and put 55992. Manufacturer, you could put the actual manufacturer of whoever made the locomotive, but I'm going to go ahead and put in Helgen. And then the model number is a Helgen 892 class 128. So we'll just put, uh, I'm just going to put class 128. And then what I like to do is put the rest of the information and below and I use Hattons because they, they tend to have the most accurate information or train what's that there's a website called uh, model train database I think it is and they have a lot of information on there too and then if you have any comments on the decoder you can stick this in here uh, as well but for me yeah that's uh, not applicable today so we're looking good here if you wanted to you can come over here and make changes and one of the easiest and most useful parts of this application is doing the speed table so I had a class 47 that even though I'd use the momentum button on the NCE power cab uh, to if you're not familiar with momentum it fakes the weight of the train so in real life a train is not going to come to a dead stop um, instead because it weighs so much it takes quite a bit of time to slow down depending on the speed so you can put something in called momentum so that when you turn off the uh, the power to the locomotive it kind of rolls to a stop rather than just you know stopping uh, dead in its place which really kind of kills the realism but in any case I had one that just would not do it for whatever reason no matter what the momentum was set at it just sucked it always come to this ugly dead stop so I was able to come in here and adjust the speed table and if I was doing CV values this would take forever instead you can either match the ends force it straight you know whatever the case is and uh, in this case I actually don't want to to do any of that and uh, <clears throat> excuse me once you're done, you just go ahead and write it, and it'll just ch -ch 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 go through in about 10 or 15 seconds and rewrite the entire speed table, and you can give it a test and go, yep, that looks good, or adjust it, and I was able to fix the uh, the Class 47 pretty easily using this, uh, this uh, system. Uh, everything else here looks good. Sometimes I'll remap the functions, uh, especially for the British trains. I want the uh, high horn... Uh, to be on the horn and the low horn to be on the bell button, which most British trains don't have a bell. And so I'll go ahead and, uh, you know, remap some stuff to make that work. And uh, that's it. So let's go ahead and we'll save this to the roster. And then we'll go ahead and close it out. And now I've got an inventory of this. I can see its ID number, its current address, which is three, the decoder model, operator, you know, British Rail. And then I can see the number, the manufacturer, so on and so forth. And all at a glance, the most important information I need. And in fact, um, I'm going to be adding a little screen just above the layout that lets me see this so I can switch between a program uh, uh, as required. So it's a really, really great system. Now, quick comment before I end the video. Um, if you install this and you get into automation, uh, you would think that you would need sensors. And although that's a recommended method for automation and, and something that I use, you can actually do time-based automation. And this is particularly great if you have a layout that isn't a, you know, has a circular uh, setup because you can set the scripts up so that let's say 
the um, 559 or 5599 comes alive and goes forward at a speed of 20 for 30 seconds and then stops. And then you could use some trial and error to figure out what stations are on your layout. And if you're like, whoa, 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 I don't know how to do scripting. Don't worry about it. Go over to ChatGPT, get a free account, and copy and paste your script into ChatGPT, and then tell ChatGPT exactly what you want that particular lo locomotive to do. And ChatGPT does a really good job uh, of programming uh, what you need if you don't have any programming experience. I'm a programmer, so I do it myself. But I've uh, I've done some uh, trials with ChatGPT, and it does a it does a really great job. And in fact, I'll cheat sometimes and just use it because it's, it's faster than typing it all typing it all out. So that's pretty much it for today. I'm going to close out Jamurai. That's the pendulum station control system. And if you're interested in setting up something like this for yourself, um, there's plenty of videos online, but I'm more than happy to go through the series, maybe make some more and show you how I do it on my layout. Otherwise, thanks so much for watching. Have a great day. See you on the next video. Talk to you soon. Bye.